Jackson. And I'm Dylan. And, and this, this is Wacky, Wacky News. News. <laughs> Welcome to Wacky News. My name is Dylan. This is a podcast for kids, about kids, and presented to you by kids. My brother Jackson and I will share neat stories every week for you to discuss with your friends on the school bus, during lunch, or whenever you want. Hi guys, happy Friday. Welcome back to Wacky News, episode 21. We have a super exciting episode for you today. A Wacky News exclusive interview with three amazing kids. Can you imagine spending eight years of your life growing up on a boat? Well, starting at ages four, six, and nine, that is exactly what Siobhan, Marin, and Niall did. They have been all around their world with their mom and dad, Bian and Jamie, and have seen and done incredible things. The family anchored their boat, Totem, in Annapolis for the past few weeks while the Annapolis boat shows were going on. The nation's largest in-water boat shows seem to be the perfect opportunity for our Wacky News correspondent, Emma, to sit down with the Sailing Totem crew. Now ages 12, 14, and 17, the kids invite Wacky News onto their boat to talk about their adventures in life on the sea. Take it away, Emma. How did you respond when your parents told you you were going to be living on a boat? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember anything. It was kind, I was four. It when was we left. kind of coaxed into us over a few years. Like they started saying, "Oh, we're going to go on this big trip," and we were always excited about it. And then finally got to the day. Okay, we're going on the big trip. We're leaving. And we were just—I mean, I, I was—I remember being sad to leave my friends behind, but we were all just so excited for it. <laughs> Do you have your own rooms or personal space? Um, There's no such thing as a room on a boat. <laughs> They're all cabins. Or personal space. I have my own cabin. It does not have a door. <laughs> they, or a curtain. Or a curtain or anything. There's just a hole. <laughs> they share a cabin. So no personal space. So, yeah. Trent personal Italy. space is hard to come by. Yeah. But it's not an issue. Usually. Most of the time. <laughs> Whoa. Rooms are called cabins with no doors? Right? And the kids share with Emma all of the other different names for things on a boat. A galley. Like, well, first, first the First of all, everything, you reference things by port or starboard. The port side of the boat is the left side of the boat. Starboard, starboard side is Starboard side of the boat right. is the right side of the boat. Everything is referenced port or starboard. And then, you don't have rooms. They're all called cabins. Walls are called bulkheads. The kitchen is called the galley. The bathroom is called the head. Bathrooms are called heads. So you have the forward yeah. head and you have the aft head. Anything that's, you know, forward is forward and back is aft. We don't have windows. We have These are ports on the hatches. side. And the ones that open on top, those are hatches. And there's no floor. It's called a cabin sole. What would you say to other families considering voyaging with kids? find other kids. <laughs> yes. It's, we, we've gone through stretches where it is not, not only where there are no other kid boats, where it's literally just us. We are the only other cruising boat out there. We were in Indonesia for half a year and we only saw one boat the entire time and that was for just a few days. Lonely really. So, <laughs> and you know, as, as great as all that is, it, it is nice to have kid boats around. And it just makes it so much better. I mean, just I mean, it's it's so much more fun going to the beach with your friends than with your sisters. No offense. Oh, <laughs> same to you. But when there are kids around, it is all about like going to their yeah. boat for dinner and hanging out on the beach together, having and going, sleepovers, going on snorkeling expeditions, stuff like that. We were with you know, I mean, you know, follow the boat. We were with them for uh, when we hauled out in Thailand. We were with them in the yard. They were hauled up yeah. the same yard as us. We were actually with them for like two months. Nice. And, uh, and they were great. And then yeah. Delos, we've actually known Delos since 2009. Since, we, since we, we met them when they were cruising in Mexico. Yeah, you got your Delos shirt. Yeah. <laughs> we, we met them in Mexico when we were both there, and uh, we crossed the Pacific with them. And we've uh, seen them other times along the way. Yeah. Yeah, we've sort of, we haven't had the same path the whole way. We've bumped into each other a few times. But generally, meeting um, cruising boats, you get to meet up with them again. Yeah, a lot of the time, you know, you'll leave them and it's, oh, it's sad, but then, you know, a year later, two years later, hey, you're in the same place again. Emma also asked Siobhan, Marin, and Niall what it was like being kids in different countries. People love kids all around, and it's actually, it's funny with us being blondies, 
in a few countries, blonde hair like is Mexico this totally and, yeah. So like like and you know in Mexico Guinea, the, in Mexico they call if you have blonde hair they call it angel hair. So like in the in the market yeah. you'll have older you know women just coming up and touching your hair, hair or to having see if their it's like a wig or hair. <laughs> stuff they think maybe it'll bring some luck yeah or in Papua yeah. New Guinea which is just as detached as you get from they the first nothing. world there's nothing there it's yeah. just canoes and fishing and and you know they're all Melanesians they're dark skin and dark hair so like white skin and blonde hair is completely just yeah. Different. alien yeah it's we were it's, spaceships yeah it's crazy. It was. It's been a lot of fun, and they definitely get a kick out of it. I can't imagine people thinking my hair wasn't real. That is so funny. You know what's also neat? Remember the Wacky News episode 14, Save the World, Eat a Cricket? Well, the sailing totem kids have definitely seen their fair share of insects and other things to eat. We eat really well. Yeah, um, we do though. I mean, half the time, it's a very I, I feel variety. like we, we don't, we we often we just don't have lunch or breakfast half the time, just because we don't feel like it. Um, but we, I mean, we eat good food and we eat healthy. Yeah. And, All the different know, and especially when you're food. when you're traveling, you get a. It's like when we were in Southeast Asia for about two years, we had so much rice. It was like rice every other night. It was night like, oh my god, fried no rice. more curry. I can't Which, rice take with it. chicken. Yeah, after two fried years, rice with vegetables. The fried rice got pretty. Fried old. rice with an egg. And you know, and then and then once we got to Africa, we were eating like ostrich. So and much kudu. meat. It was and, so you know, good. Stuff that awesome. sounds really exotic. Ostrich is just like glorified beef, actually, but but it's good. It's really mm. good and like pie. What do you the call shepherd's it? Shepherd's pie. Yeah, Bobuti. that one. Bobuti. And Bobuti. Yeah, well, well we, were, we were in like, Thailand. We were in a market and we had we tried Shwan crickets. Shwan didn't. And it's <laughs> funny because they're actually the taste is just it's like salty, you know. The but, taste is nice, but, but the, the bad texture, part is the texture because you, you can feel, feel like, like the, the wings and the feet, the thorax and the legs <laughs> in your and your mouth and stuff. Like, ugh. And they would also sell grubs in the market, but we yeah. did not buy those. No, we didn't go there. I don't know if you know Man vs. Wild, where Bear Grylls, you know, drops in and does all this crazy stuff, eats crazy food. Uh -huh. My friends and I did that, and and filmed a bunch they of it. Termites. Called it almost Men vs. Wild. So you know, part of it was eating a bunch of gross stuff. <laughs> So you like, didn't eat anything so, gross, though. Yes, we did. did not. Okay, so an example <laughs> is we we're this is on an island in Malaysia, and part of surviving was I, I, I'd seen this in a Bear Grylls episode actually. So um, it was a nest of um, what do you call it? The termites. Bugs? Termites. A termite nest. So I just took my knife and I cut off a section of it and I picked off termites and ate them. When we were in a little, when we were at a marina in a place called Mary. We would go up, we'd rent bikes, and we'd go up to the Sunday market, and they sell snakes, everything there. Grubs. So That's they, what they had the a, bugs. They had a crate with a, a python that had its head cut off. But it was still like and it, it was like around. a big meaty python, but and it, and it had been the head had been cut off for a few days now, but the body was still slithering. slithering there were like three snakes in constant circles. Being aware of so many different things has made an impact on the kids too. Emma asked Niall about how his travels have changed him. We actually, we don't yeah. we do not do a lot of pole fishing. Sometimes when we're on passage, we'll throw a meat line off the stern and just troll. And uh, we've we actually, we've we've sort of gone off, we, we still do much of spear fishing if we're in a place that has a healthy, sustainable reef. I mean, if we can tell, you just, you just look at a reef and, and if you snorkel it, you can, you can tell if it's sustainable or not. Um, but actually, since Southeast Asia, we've really gone off most of our fishing. Niall doesn't even eat fish anymore. I don't eat seafood anymore, yeah. Because um, Southeast Asia is just completely overfished, and, it was, and it's evident everywhere there. I mean, we're, we're also, we're, I mean, obviously we're very careful about pollution in terms of plastics. And, and like, you know, we, I remember this was in, um, what, I think it was in French Polynesia, and we had these kids in the boat. We're explaining that you can't throw plastic in the water. That was that was in Thailand. That was in French Polynesia as well. I think it was in both. Okay. I remember I remember well it in um in Fa I think it was in Fakarava. And anyway, we're explaining to the kids you can't throw plastic in the water because it doesn't just disappear. You know, it stays there, it washes up, maybe it kills a fish, all this stuff. And and you know, okay, okay, and we explain it and then and later, you know, one of the kids was eating something and just throws the plastic in the water. Like, come on. 
Wow, this is reminding me of the episode we just did on Monday about the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah, Emma talked with the Sailing Totem kids about that too. Okay. Yeah, I was telling Maldives. you, Chagos, it's, it's in the middle of the Indian Ocean. I mean, nobody lives there. And we, we went there thinking, oh, it's going to be the... Because we were, I mean, literally, my friends we were and I were talking really about good. going there when we were still in Malaysia. Talking about the Almost Men vs. Wild episodes we do there. And we, and we did. But, you know, we get there and we get in the water. And what we were, it was not what we were expecting at all. 80% of the coral probably was, was bleached and dead. Most of the coral we yeah. saw was white. There were a few spots you could go Which where you find like some better pale coral. Blue. And even the fish life. Was, I mean, it wasn't were, very good. It was we were mostly we were, just small fish. When we were there, also like the no coral blue. was. Um, there was bloom. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it was. Yeah, it's just startling. Even even you know the most remote well, places. It was that bloom maybe affected. part of the bleaching with coral expelling all the zoo and belly? Yeah. Yeah. And then Maldives, like 60% of the coral there is now bleached, right? Mal Maldives is the long archipelago just coral. south of India. And when we were there, it was, I mean, it was beautiful. We, we definitely, we saw some bleaching, but most of the coral we saw was in good condition. Mm -hmm. And we've heard now that, I mean, since then, about 60% of the coral in the Maldives is now bleached. I really hope more and more people start acting responsibly and thinking about what they do with their trash and how they treat this planet. Me too. If you guys haven't checked out episode 19 yet, you should definitely listen to it. We explain what coral bleaching is and things you can do to make a difference. But for now, let's get back to the interview. With minimal access to the internet, what do you do for fun? How do you learn about what is going on in the world? When we're out on some remote island and we don't have any internet, we don't know what's going on until we get to the next place. Marin and I do a lot of painting and well, no, drawing. No, what, what we do for fun depends yeah. 100% on whether or not there are other kids around. And where like we, we are. We haven't had other kids around, other kid boats around for months now. So usually it's like, it, you know, for fun is just doing something on a computer or drawing or if we're in a, oh, if we're in a good place, Definitely obviously reading. swimming and going ashore. Going back to Niall's idea, almost man versus wild, I think that is brilliant. I'd totally watch that. Of course you would, Jackson. Your ultimate goal in life is to create a kid version of Dude Perfect that is just about you flipping warbles. I think that is a great plan for when I grow up. Well, let's see what the Totem Kids say when Emma asks them about their plans. Have you thought about what you want to be when you grow up? Has it been, has it been inspired by your travels? I have no clue what I'm going to do. I'd like to do something international or out of America. I just want to work hard for a few years and then get back on a boat. I don't really care what it is. If it was up to you, would you settle down and live in just one place? No. 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 Yeah, no. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Not a chance. Would you keep traveling on a boat? Yes. Probably. Probably. I would. Where would you end up? Small no way to know. With lots of coconuts. <laughs> no way to know. <laughs> Does it ever like feel different to be like still and on ground than like moving in a boat? At first, yeah, yes, yeah. it was very strange. Yeah, well, especially after a long passage, and you and you step out on land after you know three weeks or whatever it is. Our longest has been 19 days, and and you step on land and it's it is kind of a weird. I mean, it's not like you're. Like falling over and stuff, we but you definitely—it's like, like you just spun in circles, and you're like, you know, you're holding your knees to get your balance back. What is your favorite thing about living on a boat with your family? Well, we're um, awfully closer than we would have been on a house in a house. What's best about being with you? Yeah, that's a hard one. I know, but <laughs> I think I think um, um, we um, have grown up very close to one another because we're. I, I say this, and you're gonna get at me for saying, but we're within ten feet of each other, twenty-four-seven. Oh, okay. So, I mean, literally. So, and we've and we've been that way since yeah. she was four, she six. was six, and I was nine. So, I think I think maybe if we'd gone cruising, you know, a few years after that, it would have taken a little longer. But we've just, I mean, at that age, we were still all very close, and then we just grew up in a very close environment. So we're we're very close, and we I mean we definitely argue. Oh yeah. Oh. But. Happens. But I think everyone. we are. 
much closer than uh than most kids out there. Most siblings. What is your least favorite thing? Saying cleaning? goodbye to friends and the family dishes. and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Well, well you get you, get, you get used to it after a little while because you usually end up seeing them again sometime. What I hate is 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 places either not being able to go somewhere that I want to go or having to leave somewhere sooner than I want to leave it. Or being in somewhere longer than you like. Is there anywhere in the world that you have not been to yet that you really want to visit? Europe. 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 <laughs> we've we've been to a few places, but we have not been to Europe. It's just expensive and there are some laws that make and it cold. hard on a boat. So. And it's hard to get up there. And the winters are less than pleasant. Yeah. We've had eight years of summer, so we're not really climatized to winter at all. No. We haven't seen snow since 2007. Borneo was great. Borneo was not not for the water. I mean, the water it was it was muddy, murky. It, it was still warm, it was, but it was muddy, murky. It was loaded with crocs, but it was all about the land. I mean, there were so, I mean, orangutans. I mean, we we took Snakes, a local monkeys. boat up a river for a few days and got to see, you know proper orangutans, which is pretty cool. And we also saw a civet. Yes! The jolly civet? That is the little animal that was featured in episode 12 about monkey poop coffee. Actually, we had a we friend that it. did, and he <laughs> said it was the same as normal coffee. One thing is obvious. Siobhan, Marin, and Niall have had the experience of a lifetime, and it has really shaped who they are. If you'd like to learn more about Sailing Totem, the kids, and what their life is like, be sure to check out their blog at sailingtotem.com. Their mom, Bian, writes all about their lifestyle and experiences, and she shares ways that you and your family can have a cruising experience. She even wrote a book called Voyaging with Kids, and all the pictures on the vlog are so cool. Definitely check it out. We have a link on the Wacky News show notes at podcastplayground.com, as well as pictures from Emma's interview with them on the boat. Thanks to Siobhan, Marin, and Niall for taking the time to talk with us and share such cool stories. And now, before we get to some boat-themed jokes, let's talk a little bit about our sponsor, Music For More. Music For More is a really great charity organization that launched in 2009 with the goal of helping schools that don't have enough money or instruments to offer students a music program. It's hard to believe that some schools don't even have music programs at all. Studies have proven that music helps kids in so many ways. Those ways include being more engaged in school, developing creativity, better SAT scores, increased coordination, and so much more. Music for More collects donated instruments from musicians and gives them to schools in need. They also hold a lot of special events like concerts and things to raise money for schools to improve their music programs. For more information, go to music, the number four, more.com. That's musicformore.com using just the number four, not spelling it out. And now it's time for... Wacky Jokes! A very nervous first-time crew member says to the skipper... Do yachts like the sink very often? Not too often, replied the skipper. Usually it's only the once. <laughs> what does a boat do when it is happy? It hugs the shore. <laughs> a boat carrying red paint crashed into a boat carrying blue paint, and the crew were marooned. <laughs> Where does the boat go when it isn't feeling well? To the dock. <laughs> Why didn't the sailors play cards? Because the captain was standing on the deck. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Yacht. Yacht who? Wow, you're really excited about just one little knock, knock joke. Yahoo! <laughs> And that's it for episode 21, guys. Thanks again to the Sailing Totem Kids for appearing on today's episode. And thank you guys so much for listening. If you haven't subscribed to Wacky News yet, be sure to go to podcastplayground.com to do so. And tell your friends and teachers about us, too. And also subscribe to Toothy Trivia while you're there. No more rushing or brushing. That's it for today. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye.